Hi, and welcome to Crafts with Ash. My name is Ashley, and today I'm going to bring you four really awesome DIY ideas for the Dollar Tree Metal Flowers. These are what they look like before, and you guys, the possibilities are endless. I absolutely loved creating with these, but I will warn you, there is a lot of painting. <laughs> but if you're up for the challenge, then I welcome you to join my video. But first, if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to hit, hit that subscribe button on my YouTube channel and hit that little notification bell so you can get notified anytime I upload a new video. Also, if you love all things DIY, home decor, and party planning, hit that thumbs up. Then you can jump on over to Facebook and Instagram and follow me there. I post a lot of behind the scenes content that I know that you'll enjoy. All right, this is a long one, but I guarantee you, you'll love the end result. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the DIYs. Let's begin. For the first DIY, I'm starting off with two of these packs of painter sticks. Now these come in three packs, so this will make six altogether. And I buy these packs from Lowe's, but I know that Walmart and I probably Home Depot have them too. So the first thing I did was go ahead and cut off the plastic on the sticks, and then I arranged them like a picket fence. So at first I did the straight, just one straight line, and then I decided to stagger it just a little bit. So I did one shorter, one higher, one shorter, one higher, just like that. And then I flipped them all over so the ruler part was showing on the front. And then I'm gonna take these jumbo popsicle sticks and I'm going to hot glue them down to the painter sticks. That way they all are glued together. Now one craft stick was not long enough to cover all six of my painter sticks, so I took that fourth craft stick and I cut it into thirds and then I went ahead and just hot glued the parts that did not reach. After all my painter sticks were glued all together, I flipped it over and gave it a somewhat messy coat of Waverly chalk paint in white. Now I'm not going for full coverage here, I do want some of the natural wood to show through, so I just kind of lightly brushed over it. Now I want the majority of it to be white, but like I said, if some of the wood showed through, that's totally fine. I also made sure to paint in between on those craft sticks as well. Once my white paint was dry, I took my Waverly Antique Wax and a my favorite distressing brush that I do get in a six pack at the Dollar Tree, and I just dry brushed some of the wax on top of my little fence. I just really wanted it to look kind of beat up and rustic, so I just lightly brushed over it. Now I did pay attention to the edges because I wanted to make those defined. Then after I was done distressing it, I took my sand block that I also got from the Dollar Tree and gave it a light sand just to blend in all my wax and the paint. Once that was done, I put that off to the side and grabbed these three metal flowers. Now these ones are on the stem, and these were the only ones I could find on a stem. All the rest of them are gonna be stemless. But the first thing I did was take some purple paint, and it is not Apple Barrel, it is actually from a craft store that is out of business, but any purple paint will do. And then I just painted this orange flower with three coats of that. Now you do not have to use purple. This first project is going to be very colorful and whimsical, but you can color, you can paint these whatever colors you want. Like I said in the beginning, the possibilities with these are endless, so you choose what you like. Then for the second flower, I went ahead and took my pink parfait paint from Apple Barrel and gave the second flower three coats of that. Then for my third flower, I took a light blue paint from, I believe it was Apple Barrel, but I did not realize this was a gloss paint. <laughs> You're gonna see it's a little shiny, but that's okay. I didn't notice it until the very end. But 
it still looked really great. So now I have a kind of lavender color, a light pink color, and a light blue color. After all of those were painted, I took a darker color of each one of those colors. So I took a dark blue and a makeup sponge, and I just lightly brushed over my light blue flower. And this is just to add some dimension and to define all the ridges that are in the metal flower. Then I did the same thing with the other two. So I took a darker purple and I dry brushed over the light purple flower and then I took like a hot pink fuchsia color and I dry brushed over the light pink flower. And I really love the little touch that it gave. Now after I was done putting the darker colors on each of the flowers, I went back with the original lighter colors and kind of just brushed over it to kind of lighten up the darker color a little bit. And that way it all blended in. Next, I took my Apple Barrel Spring Green paint and I lightly brushed over all of the leaves on the stems and the stem itself. I just wanted to kind of dull down the shininess and the kind of brighten up the darker colors of the leaves, so I just dry brushed over those. Then once all of my leaves were dry, I took a darker green and I dry brushed over the leaves just like I did with the petals of the flowers. Next, I found three buttons from that container of buttons from the Dollar Tree. And like I said, this one is gonna be super colorful, but you can do whatever colors you want. But I found three different color buttons and then I hot glued them down to the middle of each one of the flowers. Next, I felt like if they just needed something, so I took that white brush that I had painted the fence with and I didn't even dip it in any other paint. I just used whatever paint was on the brush and I just lightly dry brushed over all of the flowers and I dry brushed over the leaves. I also made sure to dry brush over the buttons too just to give that a little character as well. Next I grabbed my picket fence again and I arranged my little flowers how I liked them. Then because they were longer than the actual fence, I took some metal wire cutters and I cut the back or the bottom of the stems off. 
Then to give it a stronger hold, I took a craft stick and cut it in half and then I hot glued a craft stick down on the back of each flower. You're gonna see me do this throughout this whole video because that's the best way to glue these down because there is an indent. It kind of um, is a bowl in the middle of the flower. Then once I got all of the craft sticks on, I figured out where I wanted all of my flowers to go. I wanted the middle one to be a little higher and then the two on the sides to be a little lower. So once I figured that all out, I just went ahead and hot glued them all down. I love how this little picket fence flower project came out. I just love the colors on it. It is just so springy or it can transition into summer. And I think this would also be a great gift to give. I just think it's so cheerful and fun. And you're gonna catch throughout the video, I, I incorporated a bunch of different styles. So we have some rustic, we have some uh, colorful like this, we have some farmhouse, but I absolutely love this one. But you let me know, what do you think? This next project is for all the farmhouse lovers out there. So I started off with three of these metal flowers and then by using my wire cutters, I went ahead and took off the hook on the top and the bell on the bottom of each of my little flowers. Now there is a lot of painting in this, but I am kind of gonna skip around and skip ahead because a lot of it is repetitive. So I took one of the flowers and I grabbed my Waverly Elephant Gray paint. Now with the first flower, I put up all of the petals in the top row and in the middle row and now I'm just going to paint the bottom row of petals with the elephant gray paint now I am careful not to get any of that elephant gray paint in the middle row of petals but I gave that three coats I do notice when you're painting this it is easier just to paint one coat dry it with a heat gun or hair dryer, paint another coat, dry it, and then kind of touch it up, and then move on to the other layers of petals. That's just how I found it was easier. That way you're not moving the petals up and down so many times. But I went ahead and gave the bottom layer three coats. After that was dry, I went ahead and pushed down the second row and the top row, and then I carefully painted the top of the petals with the gray elephant gray paint so that first uh, layer of petals so we're only painting the first layer of petals and the third layer of petals in this first flower with the elephant gray paint we will paint the middle but not with the elephant gray paint all right so once the those <laughs> two layers are dry we're gonna go ahead and give these the galvanized look so I took some white Waverly chalk paint I took some black acrylic paint I took more of that elephant gray paint and then in a little bit you'll see me squeeze some metallic silver paint that I got from Walmart and I put it all on a paper towel. Then I took a kitchen sponge and I cut cut a little piece of it into the circle. Now if you've been following me for a while, you know that I love, love, love to make things look galvanized. So just follow along and then it'll speed up because it's kind of repetitive. But all you do, it's so simple. All you do is you take your sponge, you dip it in one of the colors of the paint, then you dab it on your paper towel, and then you just lightly dab it all over your surface. So you see I did the top already, and then I've dab, 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 and then I went down to the bottom. Now I know that it looks like it's a lot of white on there, but after I'm done with the white, I'm gonna go ahead and move to the black. After I'm done mixing in the black, I'm gonna move to the elephant gray, and then to top it off, I'm gonna do that metallic silver. And then I'm kinda gonna go between all the colors. Now this, you just have to do it until you like it. It's just to taste. So I just kinda played with it and dabbed it and mixed all the paints until I had the look I was going for.
Now once I was done galvanizing the third row and the top row, I went ahead and pushed the top row petals up. That way I had access to the second row and I painted the second row with my Waverly chalk paint in white. I did give this two-ish <laughs> coats. I gave it two full coats and then just touched it up. Then you will see that I do go in there with a smaller brush and get down in the little grooves at the bottom. But I just wanted to make sure that this was fully covered and you couldn't see any yellow underneath the white. After all the white paint was dry, I took my brush that had the gray elephant paint on it and I lightly dry brushed over the white petals. So I definitely paid attention to the outer edges and then I lightly went in to the middle. Then after I put all my gray on, I went back with that white brush and I dry brushed over the gray just to blend everything in. Then to finish this flower, I took a smaller paintbrush and some black acrylic paint and I painted the middle of the flower. Next I grabbed my second flower and I pushed all of the petals up on the top row and then for the bottom I pushed them down so we're gonna do the same thing we did on this first one but we're going to reverse it so instead of galvanizing the third and the top layer we're gonna galvanize the middle layer so I went ahead and painted the middle layer with three coats or two ish coats <laughs> of elephant gray Waverly chalk paint Once the gray paint was dry, I did the same thing and I galvanized these gray petals. So I took the white, uh, white paint, the black paint, the gray paint, the metallic paint, and I just dabbed it all over my gray petals to create that galvanized look. After that I grabbed my white chalk paint and I painted the bottom layer of petals and then went on the inside layer of petals too. I gave each of those two and a half coats. After all my white paint was dry, I pushed up the middle layer of 
petals and I did the same thing we did on the first one and just dry brushed over all of the white petals with the elephant gray paint. Then to finish this one, I took that black acrylic paint again and painted the inside of my flower. For the third flower, I went ahead and took that white chalk paint and painted the whole thing with three coats of that. Once my white paint was all dry, I took that gray brush again and just dry brushed over all of my white petals, just like the first two. Once all my gray was on, I did make sure to go over it with the white paint just to blend everything in. And then just like the other two, I painted the inside of my flower with black acrylic paint. Next, to give it that rust look, I took my antique Waverly Wax and a makeup sponge and I just lightly brushed over the edges of each one of the petals in all three of the flowers. Then I went ahead and took some of that white paint and just kind of brushed over where I felt like the wax was a little too heavy. Then I took my gray paint and lightly dabbed in the middle of the black circles. I just felt like I needed to add some detail there and add some dimension. So I just kind of went back and forth between the gray paint and the white paint and just dabbed, dabbed, dabbed in the middle until I liked what it looked like. I put those flowers off to the side and grabbed this big sign that I got from the Dollar Tree. I easily peeled off the little coffee sign. It was raised and it was metal, so I just easily peeled that off. Then by taking my scraper, I kind of tore off the little bars with the little tacks. I wasn't sure how they were um, put in there, but they were tacks. They were actually like tacked in. So I very carefully tried to get those off. One did bend, but um, it ended up looking okay. But you do want to keep these nearby because we are going to use them again. Then I flipped over and... Oh, I used my heat or my dry, hater dryer and my scraper and got the sticker off. It was not easy. It took me forever. But finally, when it was all off, I went ahead and sanded it down so it was a smooth surface for me to paint. And then I gave this board a couple coats of the black acrylic paint. Once my board was painted, I took three dowel rods that I got from the Dollar Tree 
and again by using my little craft stick method I cut off a piece of the craft stick hot glued it down to the back of the flower and then I hot glued the dowel rod onto the craft stick now I did try to paint uh, the craft stick and where the dowel rod is glued onto the craft stick I did try to paint that black and you'll see that I kind of got smart and painted the craft stick first and then uh, put uh, put the dowel rod on top of it, but it doesn't really matter because this is going on the back anyways And then you could just put it up against the wall And if you have followed me for a while, you know that I don't care about backs of projects um, I just kind of hide them, you know up against the wall um, I just really don't finish the backs because I don't sell my pieces or anything I mainly just give them away to family and friends or I just use them for my own home So I went ahead and I did that on all three of the flowers so I hot glued it down and then I painted the dowel rod black then after those were dry I took all three of the flowers and I laid the board down on the front just to kind of see where I would need to cut then I took my miter shears and I cut down one of the dowel rods to make it a little uh, shorter than the other one and now I'm just kind of positioning and kind of seeing where I want all of my flowers to go now I am going to hot glue these to the back of the board so it's not going to be a base like flat I don't know how to explain this it's it's gonna be wider on the wider side so hopefully visually you'll see once I figure out where I want these to go I go ahead and flip over my board and then I just use a generous amount of hot glue and go ahead and hot glue them on I do start with the middle one the tallest one first that way I can get that down then I hot glue the other ones on the other sides Now I did let them sit there for a little bit so the glue would set, but just to give it extra support, I did take some duct tape and I went ahead and rolled it around the back. That way they didn't fall backwards. Next, I flipped over my board and took those two metal pieces that I took off of the front of the board. And I was gonna use the tacks that it came with, but I actually lost one of them when I went to pry it off. So I had some tacks that I got from the Dollar Tree. So what I did was I used my wire cutters and actually cut off the tack part. And then I just hot glued the bar down and then hot glued each of the tacks down where the holes are. And it looked the exact same. So it didn't, it looked like it all came together and that's how it was supposed to be. So I did that on either side of my board. Next I took that brush that had the white chalk paint on it and I just dry brushed over the front of my little box. Now I did also dry brush over the metal pieces just to kind of dull down the shininess and I really love the little touch that that added. Then I took the elephant gray paint and I painted the little metal pieces that way again just to kind of dull it all down and then I kind of just mixed in some white paint, some black paint. I didn't really galvanize those but I just went ahead and dulled it down with the paints. Next I took this cookie sheet that I got in a two pack from the Dollar Tree and I went ahead and cut out the middle so it I was only left with the little ridges or the bumps of the cookie sheet. Then I just freehanded the shape of a leaf and I cut out six of them. They were all cut out I grabbed my little project again and I kind of just figured out where I wanted all of the leaves and I stuck the leaves underneath the dowel rod then once I had them positioned where I wanted them I went ahead and hot glued them onto the back of the dowel rod
Once all my leaves were glued on, I took that elephant gray paint and I just kind of dabbed that paint all over all of the leaves by using that same little sp kitchen sponge. And I just did this again just to dull down the shininess. Then to complete this project, I took this sign uh, that I got from the Dollar Tree and by using that scraper, I went ahead and pried it off of the sign and then I simply just hot glued it down to the middle of my board on my project. Woo, okay, that was a lot. I know that that project kind of took some time, but I'm telling you, this came out so neat. And if you are a farmhouse fan, or if you know somebody who's a farmhouse fan, I just think that this also would be a great gift to give. And I was thinking, these would all be great for Mother's Day. This would be great to give your mom, or an aunt, or your grandma, or a special friend, something like that. But I absolutely love this. And I'm not even a farmhouse person, but I fell in love with this. And I think I'm, I know who I'm gonna give it to because they will love this. But the thing that I love is that all the different textures of this and just the way that it has so much dimension, it just looks so high end. But what do you think? For my next project, I'm going to start off by using this board that I got at the Dollar Tree around Easter. You can use any of the longer boards, they will definitely work, but I started off by plucking off the little feet on the back, the eyes, the bow, and then I cut off the tag. After that, I flipped it around, and by using my ivory chalk paint from Waverly, I just dry brushed that over the back of this sign. I was not going for full coverage, it was okay if some of the sign showed through, but but I just made sure to have the majority of it covered with the ivory paint. Once that was painted, I put that to aside to let it dry. Then I grabbed three more of these metal flowers. Now I did make sure to grab three different color flowers. I went ahead and took the hooks off and the bells. That way they were ready to paint. Then I went ahead and I needed these to be curved up. If you notice, they are kind of curved down, but I needed the middle to be pushed down. So I'm kind of show, showing you the difference between the two. I don't know if you could really tell, but I just started off by just pushing all of the petals up. So then I took that same brush that I used to paint my board that had the ivory chalk paint on it and I just lightly brushed over all three of these flowers. Now I still wanted the original colors on these flowers to come through so that's why I'm just lightly brushing over each one of them. This project is going to have a little bit more color in it and but it's going to be really rustic. here's how all the flowers came out after I put that light ivory on it and next I'm gonna take my Waverly antique wax and my favorite distressing distressing brush again and I'm going to lightly brush over the petals with the Waverly antique wax and again this is to add that antique rustic look Then again, to blend it all in, I took that ivory brush and just lightly brushed over the antique wax. I did this on all three of those flowers.
After that, I grabbed my sign and I took my ruler and I purposely bought this ruler because I feel like it would be the width of shiplap, but I put it in the middle of my board and by using a pencil, I traced down either side of my ruler. Then after that, I took my finger and just kind of smudged the lines to make it all blend in and again, giving it that shiplap look. Next, I took that distressing brush and that Waverly Antique Wax, and I just brushed over my sign, giving it that rustic look. Then to blend it all in, I lightly sanded over it. Next I took these three frames that I got from the Dollar Tree and I went ahead and took them apart. So I took the stand off of the back and then I used my little scraper tool to pry off the little uh, hook that the stand was on and then I used, well I used a knife but you might want to get a screwdriver and unscrew the little clip on the front and I did this to all three. So I took off the stand on the back and the clip off the front. Once my frames were ready, I put them on my board and I just lined them up to see how I would like it. Now I made sure, you can't really tell, but I did make sure to leave room at the top and the bottom of the sign as well. And then I placed my little flowers on each of the frames. I kind of noticed that the frames just needed something. So what I ended up doing was taking my antique Waverly wax and just dry brushing over the frames and this kind of darkened it up a little bit and made the frames pop from the board itself and I really do think that this little touch added so much look at the difference between the two I really love that so I did that on all three frames So I finally decided what I wanted to do to the middle of my flowers. The whole time I was just racking my brain, but I think this really added so much. So I took some twine and some hot glue, and by starting in the middle of the middle of the flower, I hope that made sense, I just wrapped it around and around. So I just started spinning it around itself and just adding hot glue here and there. And like I said, I think that this added so much and it really made the flowers pop too. So, and it added to that rustic look. But I went ahead and I also did this on all three of the flowers. Once I was done adding twine to all three of the flowers, I took that Waverly Antique Wax and just kind of dabbed it on the twine just to blend it all together and make it all cohesive. Then I took that board again and I hot glued the frames down on my board and then I needed to hot glue the flowers on the frames. And to do this, I did that craft stick method where I cut off a little piece of the craft stick, hot glued it to the back of the flower and then I hot glued the craft stick down on the frame.
Then to complete this project, I flipped my board over and hot glued some twine around the top of the board and then the bottom of the board as well. I made sure to make the twine kind of just layer each other, kind of just be messy about it, but I think that that really completed this project. I love how this came out. Like I said, it is cute, it's colorful, and it's rustic, but it probably is one of my top ones in this whole video. I absolutely love this. Now you can put a hanger on it if you decide to hang it or you can just stand it. And the great thing about this is you could even hang it or display it long ways too. So you can either go up and down or side to side. It's totally up to you. But what do you think? For my last DIY, I grabbed three more of the metal flowers and again took off the hooks and the bells. Next, I grabbed my bright yellow paint from Apple Barrel and I painted the lower layer of petals and the middle layer of petals. Now, like I stated before, I found that the easiest way to paint these is to do one layer at a time. So do one coat, dry it with your heat gun or hair dryer, do your second coat, dry it, and then do your third coat. And then that way you can go ahead and put the second layer down and do the same thing. So I just painted the bottom two layers of petals with the yellow, but I did not paint the inside top layer. And I did this for all three flowers. After I was done with the yellow, before I pushed down the top layer of petals, I took some brown paint and painted on the inside bottom. So it's the, it would be the layer that the second layer of petals is on. I hope that makes sense, but I painted the bottom of it. And then after that was painted, I went ahead and spread out all the top petals and painted all of that with the brown paint. Now after that dried, I realized I really didn't like the color of the brown that it, it dried as. So I added some black to that brown paint and I mixed it up just to make it a little darker. And then I repainted over it and I really do like that color more. I really did like how that came out. So I went ahead and did two coats of that brown mixture. Once all three of my flowers were painted, I took that Waverly Antique Wax and that distressing brush again, and I went ahead and distressed the yellow petals. We are making a sunflower, so I thought that this would really make it look more like a sunflower. It'll also add that rustic effect, too. Once my flowers were distressed, I took this burlap ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree and I cut out a circle in the middle of the ribbon. So I wanted to make sure that I didn't have any of the seam on there. But I cut out a circle big enough to color, cover the inside part of 
the flower. Once I had it cut out, I went ahead and took out some of the strings on all the sides. That way it was kind of frayed. And then I went ahead and hot glued it down to the center of my flower. I did this for all three of my flowers. Then I took that Waverly Antique Wax and I just blotted it on there. That way it all blended together. Next I flipped my flowers over and I, again I did the little popsicle method where I cut off a piece of the craft stick and then hot glued it to the back of each one of my flowers. Now here is where I said I kind of got smart and I started painting the popsicle sticks before I put the dowel rod down. So I just painted it with some black paint then once that dried I went ahead and hot glued the dowel rod on top of the popsicle stick and then painted the rod black. I did this for all three flowers. As those were drying, I took this little tin bucket that I got from the Dollar Tree and I put a piece of floral foam in the middle of it, but I made sure that it was kind of up towards the top. Then to fill in around the foam, I took some Dollar Tree bags, which you all know I have a ton of, and I just filled in around the foam. Now I did make sure to leave the bags close to the top. Then I went ahead and I originally was going to put some moss down first. Then after thinking about it, I decided to go ahead and put the flowers in. So I just kind of arranged my flowers. I did one more towards the back and that one stood a little higher. And then I did two in the front and those were lower. Now I apologize, I did go out of frame here. It was just hard for me to capture this because it was just too tall for my, my camera. But you'll see what it looks like in just one second. But like I said, I just went ahead and stuck all of my little flowers in there. And if I needed to cut a stick down, I did. And I just made sure I had it how I liked it. Then once all my sticks were where I wanted them to be in the foam, I went ahead and threw a little hot glue around each one of the sticks. So that way it held it in place. Then to finish this off, I added a ton of hot glue onto my foam and just put some of that Spanish moss right on top. I love this. It is so cheerful. This could transition from spring to summer to fall. So this, talk about a great gift to give. This would be an amazing gift to give because of that reason. You could have it for all three of those seasons. So it is just so bright and so cheerful and I absolutely loved how this came out. It, it's, it, I, it's hard to choose which one I love the most, but I'm not sure, but I really love this. What do you think? I had so much fun thinking of all kinds of fun ideas to do with all of these metal flowers. When these came into the store, I just knew that I wanted to create some fun projects with it, but I did want to make sure to include different types of styles. And like I said numerous times, the possibilities are endless with these metal flowers. I just love using them and it was a lot of fun painting them. I really enjoyed painting them and just making them my own. And even if you like the style of one of the projects but you don't like the colors, that's what's great about it is that you can do this with whatever colors you want. So it is totally up to you and what fits your home and your style. So like I said, I think this one right here is my favorite because it's just more rustic. And, but it also has some color to it. But you're going to have to let me know in the comments which one was your absolute favorite. I want to thank you so much for hanging out with me 
for this video. I know that it was kind of one of my longer ones. I originally was going to do the three projects, but then I thought of the um, sunflower one and I really wanted to throw that in there. So I want to thank you so much for hanging on through this. Uh, you are awesome. And if you are new here, I want to welcome you and thank you for joining me today. If you would consider hitting that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all the videos that I post. And then if you liked what you saw today, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. And that really helps my channel to grow. Then also don't forget to check me out on Facebook and on Instagram. And that way you can join my crafting community. But I had a lot of fun thinking up all these projects and creating all these. And these are some of my absolute favorites that I've done this year. But until I see you again, I'll craft with you soon. Bye!